Isabella Gray. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> nice to have you. We Thank appreciate you. it. Mm -hmm. Mwah. Mwah. I do the kiss. I oh. usually do double kiss because I'm, I'm Canadian, Montreal. We do oh, the two kisses okay. sometimes. Well, but we don't need it. We, we can do that later. We can do that later. Thank you for being here. Yeah. We appreciate it. I've been following you for years. You're such like a strong, powerful female overall. Besides Thank your you. like talent of an amazing <laughs> singer songwriter, and it's so cool to see a woman of your age just doing what you're doing. I feel. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and and you had your birthday this weekend. Yes. Congratulations yeah. of another year, another birthday. It's one of those scary ones. Twenty-seven. Why? Oh, you are a no, geezer, no, 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 no. It's my it, well because it's, you go from being in your mid twenties to then being in your upper twenties, and that's scary. And it, you know, every year it's like the countdown continues. Ugh. You should do what Shira does and just be eighteen forever. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. You be quiet. <laughs> Let's not talk about age. Is just a figment of the imagination. Yeah. Do you, so you don't like celebrating <laughs> birthdays. I tried not to celebrate it really this year, but I got some surprises. Ooh. And I got I got a lot of um, probably more than any year um, birthday wishes on like Twitter and social media. It was cool. Isn't that interesting? Now we live our lives so publicly, like yeah. just so much more of it, which makes you feel good. It also makes you feel like oh my god. Yeah, it's like stroking your ego all day long. <laughs> it's nice. Sometimes you need that, right? Yeah. And then there's the ones that are like, I hate you. Go away. And you're like, die. Don't need that. You should die. I'm like, that's really nice. How do you deal with that? I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, so what types of surprises did you get? Um, I got some new socks and underwear. That's, and that's good. Very practical. <laughs> you know what? Every holiday I ask for socks and underwear. Because it's like you can never have enough fresh new I agree. of those. Yeah. And uh, then I also got some new Timberlands, which are like these knee-high Timberlands. They're like the classic Timberlands, but then they're like knee-high knee -high boots. Those are hot. Yeah, they're sick. And All the work men are wearing them on construction sites. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Very sexy. Very sexy. And so, but you have a lot to celebrate. You have your new album coming out this spring, and you've I been do. everywhere. And your singles that have been coming out the past year or so. Uh, how exciting is that for you to finally have this album? And and now Skylar Gray also. Like a few years back, you were known as a, under another name. Yeah. I've had a weird journey to <laughs> In this your young place. Age. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm really excited about the new album though because um, it took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted it to sound like, and now I'm just super proud of all the songs and just I'm very, very excited for people to hear it and let it speak for itself because I feel like I've been talking about it for like three years. This album, you know. You've also been busy. I've been busy. It's not busy. like you're like one of those where you're like, I'm gonna come out with a new album and then you just go to parties and no, do random things. But like it that. was supposed to come out like a year ago. Them. Well, and I just was like, nope, I got to get it right. It's yeah, you right might yet. as well get it right. Yeah. But you have been so busy. I mean, you've written some of the biggest songs we've heard on the radio in the past two years. Uh, and, and for some of the most kind of leading men, male icons like Eminem, uh, what is it like for you working with these like strong male figures? Uh, you know, it was a little intimidating at first, I have to say. Yeah. Um, you know, him, Eminem, Dr. Dre, Diddy, like these, they're walking they're legends. They're hardcore. They're like, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a little bit nerve wracking, but then it was, it was, it, I broke it down. It was all good. How do you break that down and like, not you just freak yourself let the out? music, you know, lead the way and just be creative and, and yeah, that's all. That seems, makes it seem so simple. We've had a, actually a lot of rappers on our show. I feel like I yeah, could work with yeah. them now. Like you just let the music lead the way. <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm very instinctual when it comes to that stuff. Like mm -hmm. I don't try not to think too hard. Who taught you that? I have no idea. Like your parents aren't like are your parents like that or are they neurotic? My parents are very different. I don't I don't even know <laughs> why they ever never mind. I'm not even gonna get into it. <laughs> Let's not get into therapy session, even though you are attached. Let's go to the fan chat. We've got some great questions from some fans. Uh, Kinga wants to know, what's your favorite line off the album? Do you have one? Mm, that's a good question. My favorite line off the album. Ooh. Uh, of course, my mind is blank right now. Oh, it's actually going to be probably the first lyric on the album. Uh, it's a song called Final Warning, and the lyric is, good morning, gorgeous. I drove your truck in the lake last night. <laughs> I felt like she just said that to me. <laughs> Does that and, turn you uh, on, Ross? <laughs> well, I have insurance, so the truck in the lake is a fine thing because I can get reimbursed on that. I have a $500 wow. deductible, but you know. 
Um, that's, I like that a lot. <laughs> He's like, uh, so wait, what advice did some of these these guys give you, you know, in terms of you like really being a launching pad for your career, all the work that you did with them? Well, I always think back to when uh, I was experimenting a lot and, and kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my sound and yeah. artistically and stuff. and. I, I cross a lot of different genres. Like I worked in hip hop and yeah. dance music and rock music. My, my childhood was all folk music. Like it's, I'm all over the place. Yeah. And so trying to figure out really what I wanted to do was a struggle. And I remember asking Marshall Eminem about it. And he said, just be you, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And that to me, it was so simple, but it meant so much because, you know, I was trying all these different things. People were saying, oh, try this, try that. And it's like, it, be it became to the point where it wasn't instinctual. It mm -hmm. was just like trying to be something I'm not. Yeah. And so I just brought it back. Okay, go back to my roots. Like in my, my music video um, for Come On, Let Me Ride, yeah. I, we shot it in the sticks in Michigan. And I, I'm from the sticks in Wisconsin, so it's like a very similar type of area. Just like everything about what I do now, I, I try to, you know, stick with my roots a little bit more. And also, the songs are lighter. I feel like as it, as I've heard your your songs develop, like the, this one seems like very much lighter. It's poppy. It's fun, but it's still edgy. Yeah. Cool. Well, come on, let me ride. It's definitely the odd one out on their album. Yeah. There's no song like that on the album. I just wanted to do something fun and different because yeah. I've done so many serious songs, and so that was fun. But I'm really excited to to have the whole album be heard because. There's so much variety on it. Definitely. All right, let's go back to the fan chat. All right, fan chat. We've got uh, someone wants to know, is Marilyn Manson still going to be featured on the album? Actually, um, no. That's pretty straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It was, it was just a thing where I wrote a lot of new music, and I was feeling the new songs. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of new songs. There you go. We'll look forward to it. What's your process of, of, of writing? It's different every time, yeah. but um, you know when I when I started writing music, I sat at a piano, wrote melodies, added lyrics later, type thing. And then a couple years ago, it was a new thing for me to start writing songs to pre-existing beats that these producers would make and yeah. send me. Uh, that's how "Love the Way You Lie" started. Was this beat was sent to me? I kind of like wrote a hook over it, and then filled in the blanks later. And um, that was weird for me because usually I like to manipulate the chord changes. Like, mm -hmm. oh, the melody wants to take me here, so I'm going to change these chords. But I couldn't do that on pre-existing tracks. Yeah. So it was a totally different challenge. And most of my album was actually written that way hmm. to pre-existing tracks. That's really interesting. Yeah. But there's a few songs that weren't. So. Very cool. What an advice. There's so many um, people watching and young people uh, that might be aspiring singer-songwriters. Like, what advice can you give them to being heard and seen this day and age? <sighs> it's, uh, I don't know, because I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's okay. It happens. Uh, you know, just let the, let the music speak for itself and, and um, you know, perfect your craft. It's really important. The, yeah. the more you perfect your craft, the more confident you are. And mm -hmm. confidence, I really feel like, is the, the biggest thing that helps you succeed. Um, you, can, you can be confident and committed to something that sucks, and it'll still succeed. Yeah. Confidence goes a long way. Perception <laughs> is reality. Exactly. Like to say. Be what you want to seem. I hear you. All right. How many tattoos do you have, by the way? Seven? <laughs> Seven. Oh, I don't have any tattoos. Let's get you one right here on the show. Bring it ah! up. Hey! 